All right, so today we're going to start on an 820-3330. It turns on perfectly on the battery, but it gives you no green light in the charger. Common issue, one wire circuit problem, as I've explained before. So one of the things we're going to do before we start doing anything else is let's see what kind of voltage it gives me on PP Bush G3 hot. Not that it matters, but I'm just curious. So it gives me absolutely nothing. 170 millivolts, which is worthless for our intents and purposes. So now let's open a schematic in a board view for the A203330. And look for that lovely one wire circuit that I talk about so often. So if you don't know what a data line is, look for the data line video. This is a data line between the charger where you see adapter sense, and it, they misspelled adapter on the schematic, <laughs> and the SMC, which is that sys1 wire. So if you follow sys1 wire, you'll see that that goes to U4900, which is, as you'll see over here, the SMC. So over here. This is going to be a data line. So this chip over here, see it as a couple of pads. You have ground, NC for not connected. You have internal, which is the system side of the data line, the SMC. External, which is the outside portion of the data line, which is the charger. And then you have VCC. VCC is power to turn this chip on. That power over here is also attached to this resistor, the pull-up resistor for the data line. So if this chip over here, this logic gate, does not let 3.42 volts through, this is a logic gate. This chip over here is going to take PP3V42, and it's going to send it to power this chip, and it's also going to send it over here to create the data line along which the charger is going to talk to the SMC. It's not going to happen without SMC, BC, ACLK being present. So I'm going to make a few measurements on my board over here. And again, the way I find out where this crap is, is using this board view software. You're going to ask me where I get it from, even though the answer is obvious in every fucking video. So just, just to get that, that point across for all you people who are going to ask me where this stuff comes from, because I know that you will ask me where it comes from, let me show you. So this is not a good example of a schematic, because this is one of the very, very few schematics where it doesn't actually show you it. But since I know you're going to ask, let me just find, find one where I know it has it in there. Hmm. I wonder where Lewis gets the schematics from. Hmm. I wonder where Lewis gets the schematics from. Hmm. I wonder where he gets this stuff from. Where do you get them from? Use your fucking brain. It's written right there. It's written in large 72 size font in 1080p resolution. And let me tell you something. You know why I don't answer those questions? Because if you can't Google like, like the model of your board and the word schematic, you... I just know you have no chance of ever, ever, ever figuring this out. You are never going to troubleshoot a system that has 5,000 little components on it that you can't see and figure out how they work if you don't know how to use Google. But even if you can't use Google, right? Fucking there. So, so stop asking. But back to the point. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to measure at different parts in the circuit, and we're going to try to troubleshoot and see what's going on. So first thing I want to see is is 3.42 volts making it to this chip. So I take my little oscilloscope probe. You may wonder why I use an oscilloscope to measure for voltage. It's to make life quicker. So I keep my multimeter in resistance or diode mode, and then I use this for voltage. First, let's see if that's there. It isn't. Now we're going to check for... Uh, hmm. Let's make sure this didn't stop recording. Great. Let's check if it's coming out of here. No. Let's check if PP3V42 is on that logic gate. It is. So there's PP3V42 on U6901, which is over here. Let's make that bigger. You can't see a damn thing right now. Oh, my PDF reader doesn't want me to zoom anymore. I know a lot of you say that I should use Foxit. And I'm probably really dumb for not figuring out how to do this, but when I opened it, the icons on the top were much bigger and they waste a lot of space. And I spent about 40 seconds trying to figure out how to get rid of them. 
And that was honestly the maximum amount of time that I was willing to spend. Because see yeah, how this annoyed me with Adobe? That annoyance took me like three seconds and I solved it or five seconds. Whereas Fox, it, I spent 40 seconds trying to figure that out, which is like this annoyance times 11 or 12, 13. And that's now. Fox, it needs to make a way for me to, in less than three seconds, figure out how to remove all those huge icons that weigh space in the top. And then I will use Fox. It. But until it is so obvious that I can do it, in 10 seconds or less, I'm not interested. Anyway, back to the point. So over here, we are going to be looking to see if we have SMC, BC, AC, OK, which is going to be over there. So let's try measuring that. And when I measure that, it's not there. Hmm. Where does SMC, BC, AC, OK come from? So that's the signal I need to open this logic gate. So this, I can't say that this is not working because it's not getting power. It's not getting power because this is not sending power. And it's not because this chip doesn't have power. It's not because this logic gate doesn't work. It's because the logic gate is not being told to turn on. So see how the troubleshooting went? I ruled out this chip. I ruled out this chip. I ruled out this power line not being present. Now we're going to check and see what SMC, BC, ACOK does. So that goes into the SMC. And let's see. Now, here, here's what this means. See how it says this? That, that's kind of like a little fucked up way of saying equals. So SMC, BC, ACOK equals charger ACOK after this point. So we're going to search for charger ACOK. That goes in over here. That's not really going to pull it anything down. The U7000 over there. Hmm. Hmm. This is the chip related to charging. My computer is not charging. Maybe I'm getting warm. And that's it. So let's look at the U7000 area. I need to clean this lens. I don't know if those are scratches or just dirt. I've tried cleaning it a few times, and some of it goes away, but a lot of it doesn't. Now let's see if we have some basics here. Another thing I forgot, I actually forgot to check for. Charger ACN. So what this here does, it's a voltage divider from the charger. So this from adapter, from adapter goes to this voltage divider, which is going to turn the 18 volts of the charger into 4 volts for this ACN pin. So let's see if at charger ACN, I have 4 volts. And again, you may wonder, how do I know that 4 volts is supposed to be there? I did the calculation. Uh, and also, it, just, it says over here, charger AC in. So in my brain, that's, does this chip see that the charger has been plugged in? That's like a little indicator over there. And if you go to a website, a voltage divider calculator, so one of these, voltage, uh, one of these resistors is 30 kilo ohms, the other is 9.3 kilo ohms. So again, let's just Google voltage divider calculator because I sure as hell am not an engineer that can figure that out on my own. We'll click the first result on Google. Input voltage, I know the charger is 18.5 because it listed in the schematic. If you can't find it in the schematic, you can always measure. Resistor 1, I've already forgotten, so we're going to click 30.1 and 9.31. 30.1 and then 9.31. That's going to be in kilo ohms, which means that's in thousand ohms. So that's nine point. So that's going to be this. Remember, k ohms is thousand ohms, whereas this over here is just ohms. And we compute, and we should see four point three volts there, give or take, maybe I don't know, maybe up to ten percent or so. And now let's see where charger ACN is. Charger ACN is going to be present right here. Oh, so we measure, and let's see what we get. Four volts, that 99.9999% of the time, that's not the problem. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try replacing U7000 and see if that fixes my problem. Because U7000 is partially responsible for that whole charger ACOK, SMC, BC, ACOK thing, and maybe responsible for it now. Yeah, I really got to clean this lens. That's, that's embarrassing.
Hmm. Is R7002 no stuff? It is. Yeah, so I, I noticed the resistor was not there, and I just wanted to make sure it was no stuff. On the schematic, a resistor or a capacitor or a diode is called no stuff when they put it there on the schematic, but it doesn't actually ever show up in the computer or have any use. It's just like, you know, they just, they just decide to throw that in there to waste some ink. This new heating element is such a piece of shit. Not even close to melting anything. And the, if I turn the heat up any more, the thing will just instantly turn off. I feel like I'm just slow roasting things like people with IOE stations are. I would usually pull off at this point because I'd be confident in the heat, but I'm not confident in the heat of this thing at all. I also think it's actually kind of, I'm blaming the hacko when... Hmm. Okay, that was really sad. I just turned the air all the way up so this piece of crap doesn't have an excuse to turn off. So with the Hacko FR801, sometimes the heat, if the heat is too high and the air is too low, it'll turn itself off. But it's at a, like a ridiculous level. I mean, you have to have the thing blowing really, really hard. You know? You know, like Kim Kardashian and, and her earlier works kind of hard in order for it to not turn off So I used to be able to turn this, if I had it above six and a half and the air below 10, it would turn off. Now if I have the air below 20 and the, air, uh, the heat above six, the shit just turns itself off. It's so annoying. By the way, a lot of people keep asking me what the goo is. That's flux. That helps make solder flow. So every time you're heating solder you're removing your, and you see the smoke come out, that smoke is actually the flux. Uh, if you have solder with flux inside, the flux will run away. And when you have no more flux, the solder just becomes kind of like a dry booger and it doesn't actually really uh, flow anymore. So that's Amtec 559. And I have it in a little syringe there. Spool, syringe, whatever you want to call it. I want to see that they all have good contact. I don't really want to see like a separate, I don't want to see a separate pad on the chip and a separate pad on the board. I just kind of want to see that, that you know, what, what you see right now. Like, it's really easy to solder this chip in properly. I actually did a last video I did on how to solder this chip. I actually soldered it in properly. And, be, you know, because I have, I'm insane. I decided to upload it anyway.
so that you could all see how to not solder it improperly. Uh, anyway, let's see if we get anything now. Any any changes? Any differences? Any? Okay, as you can see, uh, that was it. So my uh, my SMC BC ACLK when my charger ACLK signals were missing because of a faulty ISL6259 that was not... So, th again, this, this is one of the cool things about this system. You know, there are a lot of things that I say about Apple motherboards that are, that, that are bad, but that's a pretty cool way this works. So, you know, that, this chip takes the charging voltage and turns it into 12 volts for the machine. If that signal is not present, it will not allow the charger to talk to the SMC using the one wire line, therefore the charger will not turn on. So if there's a fault with that circuit, and it's a serious fault, serious enough that this chip is, not, is malfunctioning and not working, it just turns off the charger, which is a pretty cool, a pretty cool safety feature there. And yeah, that's it for today.